I've been rock climbing for almost two years now. And I love rock climbing fashion. Rock climbers do a really good job at blending function with fashion. Especially in my bold haul, I see some really cool street style blended with athletic wear, blended with outdoor wear, and ultimately I just feel like I'm surrounded by people who are 10 times cooler than me and 10 times stronger than me. I'm working on it. As a sewist who also climbs, I've been fascinated about what makes rock climbing clothes work. The clothes climbers wear need to be durable yet breathable and allow the climbers to have range of movement. <laughs> of course you could just wear active wear, but if you want to blend in with all the other cool climbers, you need a cool pair of pants. And that is why today I want to make my dream pair of rock climbing pants. Let's go to my studio and I'll show you the project. When you start sewing, you gain the superpower to be able to combine all of your favorite things about a garment into one super mega awesome garment. So naturally, over the last year or so, I've been trying to figure out what all of my favorite parts of rock climbing pants are so that I could make my dream pair of pants. Some design elements that I really enjoy are reinforced knees, the use of thicker fabrics like cotton canvas or drill, having at least one area where you can clip a carabiner hook onto feels awesome. Having an elasticated cuff or a cuff that isn't too big is awesome because then you don't get tripped up when you're working on balance problems or slabs. And personally, I do enjoy a pocket in case I'm bringing my phone around with me at the gym. And I really enjoy an elasticated waistband, especially one that has some sort of tie inside or outside of it so that I can tie it really tight. And that way when I'm stretching my body and upside down and falling off the wall, I know that my pants aren't lowering down as I'm climbing. Of course, I had to do a sketch to try and visualize all of those ideas in one pair of pants. And this is that sketch. We have an elasticated waistband with buttonholes and ties. I would like to learn how to do these sort of pockets, not side seam pockets, because they're easier to use. I would like double reinforced knees with cool top stitching, a wide hem, back pockets, and these loops here that tuck into the side seam where I can hook my carabiner. I also thought this diagonal detail at the back could be cool. This is the fabrication that I tried to draw on that sketch and it's an Ikea tablecloth. I selected this fabric because it reminds me a lot of the fabric of one of my favorite climbing pants, although the more I feel it, the thinner it gets, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be working with this today. The other option is just working with this natural cotton canvas, which is a little bit on the thick side, but will soften with wear. And I thought it could be cool to use some vintage tea towels like this as my knee patches and pockets and extra details. One of the most crucial design elements that I almost forgot to tell you about is that I would really like to incorporate a gusset into my work. Here are one of my favorite pairs of climbing pants and they're literally just martial arts pants. I inherited them from my brother. And although it's hard to see, they have quite a decent sized gusset on the inside of the leg. The gusset just gives you more room in the crotch to kind of move your legs around and it's really good when you're climbing. I don't really know how to sew a gusset but I'm just gonna try and use Use these pants as a reference point and maybe do a little bit of tracing of these pattern pieces and keep my fingers crossed that this works out. Well I'm gonna use wrapping paper and those karate pants as a guide and I'm going to try and create my own pattern. Wish me luck! Also, if we've never met before, my name's Carly. I'm a sellist here on YouTube. I am extremely passionate about making things and I'm happy that you're here. Let's do this. I have no idea what this tool is called, but it's a spiky wheel and you can roll it over your clothes and it will do a small perforation on the paper underneath, which is excellent for creating patterns from your own clothes. I'm just making a twirl because I have no idea if this is even going to work. It was really hard to trace out the gusset shape on the karate pants, especially because the karate pants don't have a side seam, so it's just one big piece of fabric. So there's not really any anchor points to know where your pattern pieces start and end. So I'm seriously freestyling this. And yes, I have suspicion that the back and front pieces are the same pattern piece for this pant, which is unusual but I'm hoping that the gusset is what's giving me all of that extra room in the back. We'll see if I've made a critical error, but it's fine, because it's twirl. It's twirl. It's fine, it's twirl. Okay, obviously these will be elasticated, but dang man, not bad. I'm quite extremely pleased. The gusset installation was very straightforward. Granted, I did watch a YouTube tutorial last night, but I was concerned. 
and there was no need to be. I'm happy with the length, I'm happy with the roominess in the pant, I'm happy with the range of motion that I have. So my gusset and pant pattern is great. I've only ever learned how to install side seam pockets like these ones here, but for the longest time I've wanted to learn how to do those more accessible pockets that kind of sit more on the front of the pant. And to do that I've been taking an awesome class which actually brings me to the sponsor of today's video which is Skillshare. As I was saying I wanted to upskill my pocket making technique for quite some time now and I was able to do that following Joe Ando's class, Sewing Basics, How to Sew Pants for a Perfect Fit. This class showed me how to prepare and insert a pocket bag into my pants that I'm making today. Joe is a wonderful teacher. His instructions were clear, simplified, and thorough. And not only did I learn more about pocket making, I also was able to learn lots about the construction of tailored trousers and how to make them fit your body perfectly. This class has been wonderful in demystifying some of those more intimidating aspects of creating pocket bags and trousers. And I learned a lot from the construction breakdown in this class. Skillshare is the largest online learning community with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, television, freelancing, design, productivity, and so much more. Skillshare can help you take your career, side hustles, passions, and hobbies to the next level. There are many different categories of classes to take, so there truly is something for everyone. And although I love taking a lot of the sewing classes, there are many other genres of classes on Skillshare that take my interest as well. So if starting your learning journey with Skillshare is something that interests you, Skillshare have a wonderful offer for you. The first five 500 people to click the link in my description will receive one month free of Skillshare. So jump on that, click the link if you're keen, and I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and let's get on with these pants. Before I cut everything out, let me just show you my pattern pieces. But in the chance that you want to make climbing pants but not your own pattern, I do have two recommendations. There's the Topo Pants by Layla Makes Shop on Etsy, and the Granite Pant PDF Pattern by Road Trip Pattern Co. I've not made these patterns, so I don't know personally what they're like, but they look really cool and yeah. I've done a crazy thing and only drafted one piece for the back and the front of the pant. And the reason why that's kind of working is because it is a martial arts style pant and you get more room from the gusset. Here is my pant piece, it's very normal. This is where the pocket will go and this is the inseam here. And I've put extra length at the top, so hopefully I can just fold it over and over again to make the elastic waistband. Here is my gusset piece. It looks quite diamond-like. I think you could probably make it more triangle-like. There are lots of different types of gussets, but yes, this is mine. By the way, the leg of my pant is about 31 inches long. My gusset is about 13 inches long and 11 inches wide. This is cut on the fold right along this line here. Here are my pocket pieces. It will just go over like this. I also made a pocket cover because I was following Joe's trouser pocket tutorial and I'm not really sure if that's necessary for this. The only thing I need to do is add a little bit more length so it can be tucked into the waistband. I haven't done this yet because I'm not exactly sure how to do it, so I'll report back. And I'll just draft my reinforced knee patches and my back pocket pieces when I get up to it because I'm not too stressed about that. Let's line it up. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. Okay, I just went for a run and I spent the last literally hour and a half installing one of my pockets. I just wanted to know that I could do it and I had to just figure it out in my brain. And here it is. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. And I'm going to show you what I did before I forget. So here's one side of my pant and what I need to do is just cut out this portion here to create space for my pocket. I self-drafted my pocket pattern. It was a big rectangle and then from one side I just cut out the exact same part of this curve. You may notice that my pocket pattern doesn't go all the way to the top of my pants pattern and that's because I wanted excess fabric at the top of here so that I can fold it down to create my waistband channel. When the pocket gets made it will look like this and that's the pocket. The only other pattern piece I had to make was this pocket cover or bearer I think that's what it's called and basically I'm going to top stitch that on right here and I'll be able to sew this together with the mane of my pant. It's confusing I'll show you. First thing I need to do is just clip this seam allowance here so that I can fold it over as this piece is going to remain exposed so I need all of these edges tucked in. 
Next up, I'm just going to place that little pocket cover on top of the pocket, like so, leaving the correct amount of excess at the top. I marked that on my pattern. I'm going to pin it down and top stitch. Also, apologies that the lighting gets a little bit weird in here after dark. I do my best to light the space, but it's just, it's not a perfected craft. I knew I would forget this. The thing that I wanted to do for my second pocket was start off by overlocking this top edge. Not because it needs to be done, just because when I made my first pocket, it was just a little bit fray and annoying. I am still gonna overlock it now while I haven't done much work, but yeah. I would overlock it first. Now that that little pocket addition has been added, it's time to attach the pocket to the pants. And you do that by pinning it right sides together along that pocket edge. And I'm just gonna stitch those two pieces together with a half inch seam allowance. Then I'll press the seam allowance to the pocket. And then just under stitch the seam allowance down so it lays nice and flat. Now I'm just gonna French seam the bottom portion of the pocket closed. I just realized I sewed my whole pocket to the inseam of the leg. <sighs> Not the pocket. <laughs> A really great way that I could have avoided that would have just been to sew these two legs together at the crotch inseam and then I wouldn't have any problems because the only other seams left would be the pocket seams or the side seams. It seems really simple to me now but sometimes it's like that when you're self-drafting. It's like things that are really simple you may just miss because your brain is really working to figure out how to do other more complicated things. Anyway, to avoid more heartache, the next thing I'm going to do is <laughs> sew the side seam together. You want to know something actually insane? The seam that I just sewed together in the middle of the crutch, that's actually the pocket seam. Don't know how I managed to do that. Don't know if I care enough to fix it. It's a really similar curve for the pocket and the inseam. But I just looked at it and I was like, yep, everything is wrong. This has not been some of my best work tonight. Oh yay. Basically up here, we have this pocket bearer or pocket cover, and then we have this portion of the pant. And basically what I did for the other one was sewed these two seams together as far as I could, just kind of like how you finish the bottom of a zipper. And to give myself a little bit more access, I just clipped into this seam here and this seam here. And it's okay if there's a little bit of weird sewing going on here in my brain because basically what's gonna happen is this is all gonna get covered by waistband. Then what I did was press that seam out and then just press the pocket over as flat as possible. And then of course, if you wanted to help yourself, you could just base the pocket down at the top and the bottom so it was easier to work with. Well, I've gotten to the part of the night where I've officially started doubting all of my creative decisions, my career, my prospects, and everything that I am. I've no money and no prospect. <laughs> so I think it's time for dinner and stopping sewing. Anyway, these are the pants. These are my different knee patch ideas. I thought it could be really cool to use some vintage tea towels on the knees and on the back pockets and basically all of the accent details. But for a little bit more of a calm approach, I also thought I could use this same fabric, but using the stripes horizontally. I'm not really sure what I like, so I'm just gonna sleep on it and see y'all in the morning. They may not be the best pair of rock climbing pants in the world, but they are my first step to making the best pair of rock climbing pants in the world. Gotta start somewhere, right? It's the morning. First things first, I'm going to sew my back pants pieces, pants pieces, goodness, together at the crotch. Just this seam here. And I'll overlock that too. And you took a left, left me with a lot of...
I've been collecting vintage tea towels from the op shop for a few months now, so I have a cute little collection going, which leads me to the hardest part of this construction, which is deciding which tea towels I want to use on the pants. Let me show you some of my favorites. Cattle Society. There's 800 million sheep in New Zealand. Three million of them are humans. Norfolk Island. Not a tea towel, but very honorable. Bear character that has green tie. Yogi Bear. Oh my gosh, that's actually insane. Yogi Bear. How could I not remember that? 1985 Australia. Really big favorite, that one. New Zealand. Oh, this one's sick. 1994 Wombat. This one's awesome. What the heck? Australian Pelican. I love that one. Butterflies. Darwin, Sunset City. 88, there's a lot to celebrate. Death Australia Train, one. Winner Manly, Australian Koala, 1999. Australian Banksias, 1998 calendar. Girl in a Million, 25th anniversary. Australian Sugarcane, another New Zealand. This is going to be a very hard decision. Oh my gosh. This is very scary. Wow. Okay. Ho ho ho! Terrifying. My favorite tea towel. Snipped. So from what I gather, this seam goes into the side seam and everything else is left exposed. So I'm going to tuck under the other seam allowances. Not sure if I want to keep all this length here. I just wanted to give myself more room rather than less. That's the vibe. Kind of cool. Now I've just got to top stitch them down. I think I'll do an eighth of an inch right along the edge and then I'll do it a quarter of an inch away. So I'll do a double top stitch. A double top stitch. The reinforced knees are reinforced kneeing. <laughs> And to celebrate, I get to treat myself with having to decide what the back pockets will be made out of. The hard decisions are never ending. <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm going to place the pocket, but I think I want to use this tea towel. Impossible to decide, so I just picked. It'll be fine. I think these guys look slightly freaky, but I love the idea of them just sitting there on the pocket like that, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> I think I'll do a half inch or so, probably more like a centimeter. And that looks good, I think. It's about an inch over there. Truth be told, adding all of these tea towel bits maybe makes the pants a little bit more crazy and a little less wearable for some people, but it is so much more enjoyable to sew when you're having fun. And how can you not be having fun when you're cutting out patches like this to sew with? I'm so glad I did this over the safer option because having fun is good. I'm getting a little fixated on how many different pocket types I can add with all of these different tea towels. <laughs> so I think I'm going to take a little break from adding pockets and such and I'm just going to add the gusset now and attach the inner seam of the pants. Maybe I can get a little see of what they look like on my body. The reason why I'm adding all these details now is because it's much easier to add details while the pants are flat and not all constructed, but it's also harder to visualize your pants when they're not looking like pants, so I'm gonna construct as much of them as I can. It just kind of feels fun to keep adding pockets. <laughs> to make it easier to install the gusset, I ironed it at the center fold, and I'm gonna line that center fold up with the center crotch seam of my pants and pinning that point. And then I'll just pivot this piece of fabric and pin it all the way down the end until I get to the points. Basically, I'm just going to sew at a half inch seam allowance all the way down that edge of the gusset. Then basically what needs to be done is just repeat that but for the other pant. Now I'll just press that as best as I can. But you can pretty clearly see that gusset there and it looks... Fine. 
I'm adding more pockets and this is the little side pocket I'm kind of working with right now and basically I just did a little pocket here top stitched it all these edges are raw and then there's a tiny little diagonal and now I'm gonna fold over all of the outside edges and top stitch it down this might be crazy but who cares the top edge will be tucked into the bottom of the pocket so I can leave that unfinished and every other edge can get a lovely little press I don't even need to finish this edge because it's going to be tucked into the seam allowance. Awesome. I think it's possible I've gone overboard, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and be crazy. I've added a tiny little pocket here. This is like a little loop. And then I've got this sort of hammers pocket here. Details are secured. It's pant making time. I'm going to place them right sides together and I'm going to pin and sew each of the side seams completely shut and then overlock that edge. Folded it over a half inch or thereabouts, and basically it just needs to be wide enough to hold this elastic. I'm having a hard time knowing whether I should add ties on the outside or on the inside, because I'm gonna put buttonholes in there now so I can do that function. My instinct is putting them on the inside, so I think I'm gonna roll with that. We've got about four centimeters apart, I think. That's fine. This is my favourite tool for opening up a seam. It's a bit blunt, so I use a hammer to make it work. Again, I don't know what the name is. I find that it means you don't have a lot of fraying edges because it just slices them open like a dream. Yay! It fits. Okay, good. Home stretch now. I sewed up my uh, waistband channel, leaving a small gap so that I could thread the elastic through, which I just measured around my waist until it was comfortable. And once I threaded that through, I decided I would make a really cute little tea towel name badge, which I just wrote my name on with a biro and ironed it. I also used a match to kind of seal off the edges, but please check your fabric before you do something like this because some fabrics will just burn up. But I checked mine before in the sink and it was fine. I could just hem the pants, but I want to add little ties on the bottom of the hem so that I can tighten them when I'm climbing. And I was just going to add buttonholes to the outside of the cuff. But then I remembered my mum had made this pair of magic pants by Antilly, and she added ties on her cuffs. And I asked her how she did it. She said, don't do buttonholes. You should do Antilly's technique of doing this one open rectangle. It's a clean finish, and it is more robust than a buttonhole. And I was like, mum, you're so right. Basically, you cut out a little square, and then you overlock each edge of this piece and I'm just going to mark roughly where I want that rectangle to sit Then I'm just going to fold my hem out and pin these two pieces on top of each other like so then you're just going to sew over that rectangular outline and Tilly says to do a smaller stitch length to help with the precision Although it's a little scary, the next step is to open up this inside of the rectangle and then just clip into each of the corners and then basically you're just going to take all of that fabric and push it through the hole until it comes out to the wrong side of your project. And then of course I'm going to give that a really good press. And you can give that a top stitch if you like, which is something that I will do now. Now I'm just going to finish off the hem as usual and that's created a wonderful little tunnel which I can bring my ties through. Pants are done. I'm so pleased with the result. I can't wait to show them to you. It was definitely a challenge for me to take my idea from this sketch to these pants without a pattern, but I'm glad that I persisted. Luckily, there's a lot of great resources on the internet, so that can usually get you through a project if you're stuck, like I was in this one. The lesson I learned from making these pants is to keep having fun with it. There was a point in this project where I thought, keep it really simple, keep it neutral, it'll match everything, but, but I'm really glad I resisted that thought and went for my most enjoyable, funniest, loudest, heartwarming idea. Sure, I could have made a neutral pair of pants that I'll get a lot of wear out of, but ultimately when I make stuff that has heart and thoughtfulness in it, I just treasure it about 10 times more because it's so special. If I bust out any of these knees or pockets, I can easily replace them with other tea towels, which is a cool function. And I love that I could add details like this gusset, the ties and the hem, and all of these little pockets and loops. Anyway, that was a big one, but a fun one. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's time for me to go rock climbing and for you to see these pants. If you want more content from me, of of course, you can always find more videos here on YouTube, but you can also find me on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, Patreon, and my website where I make happy handmade things. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you so much. And of course, 
let me know what projects you're working on at the moment. You know, I love to hear about them all. Give me the goss, give me the pattern deets, break it down for me. I'll see you all in the comment section. And without further ado, here are my best rock climbing pants ever. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>